Great interest rates with no principal payments until January 2022. Share the gift of love. Make it a merrier Christmas with the communal. Exciting prices for members throughout the promotion. For we are your Santa this Christmas. Offer ends January 31st, 2022. Lending terms and conditions apply. Communal show with Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform? Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. Rich, smooth, delicious, and packed with vitamins, that could only be one thing. It's a Rika Almond Beverage. Great on its own are a lovely addition to smoothies. So call Superb Distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at Tempe St. George's today. Remember, Rika is life and life is Rika. All right, and we'd like to officially welcome you to another Mikey Life program. I am your host, Mikey Hutchinson, and we are coming from the most beautiful Caribbean island, that is Grenada. And the pleasure is mine to be back with you. This is where it all happens. We are talking about the good, the bad, and the Mikey. You better tell somebody about it in order to program like this one, Dad. Anyway, let's get into the news. State funeral held for the former Governor General, Sir Kalil Glean. One missing teenager has been found, thank God. All right. Now, the Grenada National uh, Population and Housing Census is off to a start, they say, with uh, enumeration of the homeless population. And uh, judge throws out suit challenging the general elections in Barbados. And the COVID-19 vaccine is safe, they say, during pregnancy. All right. Now, there's a story of a, of a man from the UK who traveled to the Caribbean to find a better life. Now, that, that is something you don't hear every day. And what does he do? Plays the guitar and sell juices on the street side. I'm making, I'm not making it up. All right? So give me a minute, man. We're going to share all that with you too. Listen, someone sharing tonight's program will receive some free credit compliments to yourself. Here's our invitation to you to go ahead and share, share, share the business. We can let you know as well, the headlines was brought to you through the kind compliments of quotes, Grenada Limited, Digicel, Nawasa, the Housing Authority of Grenada, Real Value, IGA Supermarket, and Superb Distributors. So folks, all of Brace up all yourself, get comfortable and think of carry a real thing to tell all you. You know what I mean? So we're taking a short break and we will be back. The Housing Authority offers products that people can choose from, products that people can access, and I think anyone looking to build 
just call the Housing Authority of Grenada. The service was uh, superb. Every step of the way, they collaborated with the owner, they collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that from buildings they have done in the past to where they are now, they have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. All right, again, so we would like to officially welcome everyone to uh, tonight's Mikey Life program. And again, the pleasure is mine. All right. Now, the first thing that we have to tell you about, boy, you know, they, well, they are doing some work um, on the airport and thing to fixing it up and thing. I understand. So I just saw that they uh, put out a, an employment opportunity at the China Harbor Engineering Company Limited. All right. That is for the St. George's Airport Runway and Road Upgrade Rehabilitation Project. All right, applications are invited to fill the following positions. Construction laborers, heavy mechan uh, sorry, machine operators, and truck drivers. Now, all interested applicants must work with the following when visiting um, the office, all right, at Sajikoa Woodland St. George, Grenada. Two forms of ID. You also must have a clean police record and a proof of vaccination or, or negative PCR test. All right. Now, for further information, you can contact Ms. Uh, Netanya Chase, Administrative Secretary, on 4228016. Or you can send an email to uh, N-A-T-H-A-N-I-A, Netanya.chase at C-H-E-C dot B um, I dot C N. I don't know if that B I or B J. So try any one of them, eh? Because there's a line to it, so I'm not sure. All right. Visiting hours for employment applications Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Please be guided accordingly. All right. Although also, um, as a point of note, the, the, the Grenlec boy, Grenlec, they are having their usual planned outages and so on. And they would like to let you know that if you're in the following areas, that you're likely to be affected. Now, for Wednesday, Westerhall St. David, 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, Belmont Kariaku, 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. On Thursday, Union in St. Andrew, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Friday, though, there are several communities. Caliste, uh, St. George's, you're likely to be affected, 1 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Pointsfield, St. Patrick, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Also, The Cliff, St. George, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And Mount Ridge in St. Patrick, 8.30 a.m. to 12 noon. They say that these planned outages are part of an ongoing maintenance program. This program allows Grenlec to maintain reliability, power quality, and the safety by continuously doing repairs and upgrading of the lines, poles, and infrastructure. All right. What else do we have to tell all the way moving on? The next thing, boy, um, the state funeral. Grenadians turned out in their numbers, boy, to be the farewell to the former governor general, so Kalile Glean. Um... They say it was a, a really interesting funeral service to hear all the tributes on Swan. Now, the body of Sir Carlisle Glean was entombed at the Douglaston Cemetery, Gua of St. John. Sir Carlisle, aged 89, who lived a life of great public service, died on the 21st of December last year after ailing for some time. There were tributes. Some came, come, came from um, the Governor General, uh, and uh, that's uh, on, uh, Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagonard, and as well 
um, Grenada's Prime I Minister. I recall the sound advice he gave me when I served as Chairman of the Public Service Commission during the period 2008 to 2010 and before I assumed office as Governor General in 2013. On the latter occasion, he stressed that when making certain decisions, I should always act, and I quote, out of an abundance of caution and for the avoidance of doubt, end of quote, before taking or not taking a particular action. These words of advice he disclosed to me were given to him by Dr. Francis Alexis QC and have served me very well over the past eight years. His final act of long and distinguished service to our beloved country was his exemplary service as the fifth Governor General of Grenada a role he performed with dignity and honor and with a gentle touch, which won him the admiration of many Grenadians. I had the opportunity to see him as a political figure. He seemed to be one of the few persons in the country who went into that era of responsibility and not gained too much enemies at any given time, either temporarily or permanently. This to me, sisters and brothers, may be a good way of remembering Sir Carlisle for those of us in the political hustings to take a page from his book. As I reflect therefore on the life of Sir Carlisle today, I recall therefore an exceptional person, a genuine and decent human being whose most endearing trait was probably the level of humility he displayed throughout his entire life. Those were tributes coming from um, the Governor General and as well the Prime Minister. He's a a good soul. I myself had the opportunity to engage him um, when I was a little boy and as well um, uh, also um, the, his family members and really, really, really um, nice people. And, and so you realize how, how much of a loss this is for the, for the nation when you see and hear some of those sentiments expressed about Sir Carlisle Green. He was the man that many people would have gone to in my community back in, in Guo back in the day. I recall. You understand? Everybody went um, to uh, Sir Carlisle Green. Yeah, you have a little problem, you go to Sir Carlisle Green. Your family run broke and need some help financially, you go to Carlisle Green. You have a child like giving a little trouble and uh, you need them to be a little straight, a little, you know, go on the straight and narrow, get a little discipline lesson. You go to Sokala Glen, you understand? Uh, I remember um, as a little boy, I used to be really sick, very sick, all right? I used to just pass out, you know, when I was like five, six years old, because I suffered and I had an accident when I was a little boy, when I was younger. And um, I remember my, my family went to Sokala Glen, and he and his family facilitated um, my... Um, my uh, travel to Barbados to have further checks um, on my head and to date we remain really really close in terms of his family um, you know and uh, it's a really really good family and I'm, I'm forever grateful I've always remembered um, that gesture um, by him and his family to make sure that this little boy who's so sick um, back back in the day in Guav got the medical attention um, that he needed abroad you understand? So, um, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that, too. All right? Well, you can't hear, but of course, you're, uh, the family of Sokala Aglin, who's currently viewing the program, will know um, that, uh, yes, I still do remember and appreciate that gesture. And this Suzanne and, and, and the family. Okay, here's another thing that we have to tell all you. Um, 
we, we told you of some missing children, right? There are two boys that are, that are missing now. The police is saying that one of those boys have been found. Adam Williams, who's actually of Mount 2, according to police, he has been found. He's only, um, you know, these teenagers. You understand? I, I don't understand. He was reported missing on Friday, 14 January, according to what? Anyway, he's been found. All right, he's been found. Right, it's important to know. It's important to tell us when, when these people go missing. You tell us that they're missing. When they're found, tell us as soon as possible. As soon as it is possible. Don't wait for our day to pass. Don't wait for two days to pass. As soon as a person is found, send us an update on that, okay? Thank you very much. Good. So, Olia, the next thing that we have to tell you about, boy, um, the Central Statistical Office is now said to be moving full speed ahead with the enumeration for the 2021 National Population and Housing Census. Census Day was officially launched all right, yesterday with the enumeration of the, home, the homeless population throughout the island. The first cohort of census enumerators were dispatched in November of last year to begin mapping and collecting of data, including telephone numbers and head of households to help um, expedite the on-telephone interview process. Grenada census was postponed on two occasions due to the spikes of COVID-19 in the country. All right, now the Director of Statistics, uh, Halim Rizan, says that they'll be working closely with the Ministry of Social Development and the Royal Grenada Police Force to help enumerate the homeless population. Now, the second batch of supervisors and new enumerators are now being trained to begin, to begin their fieldwork by the end of January. Olio, now the next thing that we have to tell Olio about, boy, um, well, this morning, not last night, but this morning, we got the um, COVID-19 dashboard that revealed that there was, uh, there was some 470, 470 new cases of COVID-19 recorded yesterday alone. One of the, I think that would be the second highest. You understand? But important to note as well, though, there were 2,157 tests that were conducted yesterday. Also, the highest amount of tests done in one day. We're going to get nurses to test all these people. So you know what's going on there? Them nurses under pressure. Because it's peace. You understand? Real people have to test. Real. 2,000 and up. 2,157. That's a lot of people to test. So, all you, I feel it from the nurses. All you, you know, when all you go in and test something, don't afraid to bring a little coconut water for them people, for them nurses and them because they just, they just, they just peck. You understand? They, so, they're not human beings too, they peck. Real people. They have to test, they want to go to the bathroom, they can't because there are people in the line. And, because, and if, they, if they get up and think, all the same, all kind of thing, hey, they, they don't see how much people here, yeah, yeah. And they're going to, you know what I mean? Bring a bottle of coconut water. You're good for your daughter, well, you're good for the nurses too. You're not like a Glen Egg. You're not like a Glen Egg. You're not bring something for them people because they, just, they, 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 they are drained. You know what I'm saying? Bring a Coke, a juice. You know what I'm saying? They go appreciate it. Because they're under real pressure. They don't want to get up. They just want to get up and they can like and stretch their foot. And they can't even do that. Some of them they're skipping their lunch. They're skipping their lunch. But all the still don't realize all the sit down there for hours watching them people do all these tests and nobody go say go and bring them I'm out. Telling me about all you. All you don't understand. In addition to the testing, they still have to do the regular clinic. They're not making it up. In addition to that, 
They have other things to attend to too. Other people. Somebody come. Yeah, you know I mean, they will have like a court. Yeah, you know I man, a man head boss. I don't think they have to do. They have to get like a stitch and thing. They have to do everything. Listen, but if all the respect not is going forward, I don't know who else. That mean all the respect. Oh, that what they, that, that what they getting paid to do? Is that so? Is that so? no. So all the the nurses and thing, they under real pressure. Yeah, they under real pressure. So all the bear with them. You understand? Also, also, behave all yourself. All you want to go and line up along the place. All you see what going on in the place. Follow the protocols because they're not sending them all going to stress out all the way outside. You understand? They're not sending them all going to stress. Some of all they want to test every day. Every other day before the wind blow. Oh, you say you was close to somebody. You want to test again. God, he's up them nurses now, dog. So, 470 tests conducted. 2,157 tests done. Sorry, 470 new cases identified. 2,157 tests conducted. No deaths, thank God. Um, the positivity rate, 21.7%. Um, New recoveries, 256. And in terms of hospitalizations, there are seven persons um, who are hospitalized due to, due to um, the COVID-19. You know what I mean? So all the, yeah, why pressure, why? So there's going to be the post-cabinet briefing. It wasn't done today because of the funeral. So the post-cabinet briefing is going to be held tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. So you can check out the page for that. You know what I mean? We will, we will, go, we will go up on there. We will ask the... You can talk to the to the um, to the, the doctors and them about that kind of business. So a couple of business we want to find out, you know. So that's small thing. We will check us there. We organize the business. All right. All right. Um. Yeah, they're not so not pressure dog. You know what They have family too. They don't want to go home and take a little re relax too much like a movie. You know what I'm But they 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 they're pressured physically and mentally. You understand? And so, you have to understand that. So even sometimes when you get like an attitude um, from the nurses and them, in this, no. It's not, I'm not trying to justify that, just saying to understand the source of that. Understand the source of their frustration and sometimes they, they are working under some unfavorable conditions and then with this whole thing, they know. You know what I mean? Imagine it, some of them people talking all kind of thing about conspiracy. Conspiracy, conspiracy. Or some of them about we outside. You see some of them, because you see them moving around, right? You see them moving around, not adhering to the protocols and stuff. And then the f a couple of days later, you see they come and give you a headache in the line. You know what I mean? More bigger than anybody else on in the line and all kind of business. That is going to frustrate anybody. They tell all of you to do this and do, do that. Do, no, you don't do anything. Do, do anything. And when it gets, when he, when he he defend now, it's other people are going to stress out. You know what I mean? So understand the source of some people's frustration you know it's not justifying but it's just understanding it's not personal get that just understand it's not personal so me and motley boy she confirmed today that there's been a challenge <laughs> the opposition filed a, um filed an injunction to stop um barbados's election from taking place tomorrow you understand yeah bye but um we've just found that um that case, it was thrown out at suit. It was thrown out. You understand? They say that Justice Sisley Chase has thrown out the challenge to the suit that was brought to halt the general elections um, from, from taking place. Uh, she was saying that they, they did not have the jurisdiction to hear the matter and that it ought to have been brought before an election court so she says that the the action was incorrectly filed you know they say there were arguments that were heard and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. anyway they leave that dog there all of the, these nights was cold everybody Grenada all of Grenada coming like like Canada I don't even say in London Grenada coming like certain parts in Canada and why they play school 
Jesus. You understand? Know Chile ain't gonna make. <laughs> and there are some places in Grenada already cold, eh? But the place cold now that. You know what I mean? The top, I mean, it has the recognizing that, but your skin recognizing it. Place cold. When they say when it's coming down to 4 in the morning, so boy, it's massing or that. Anyway, lady that talk. All you. Studies of uh, pregnant women found the two most widely used COVID vaccines pose no risk to mothers or babies, the EU's drug regulator said today. They say research involving some 65,000 65, people, women, showed growing evidence that the Pfizer and Moderna jabs did not cause pregnancy complications. All right, the European Medicines Agency, EMA, said the shots also provided increased protection against hospitalization and death, particularly in late pregnancy, said the watchdog. All right, so they say that the, 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 the review did not find any sign of an increased risk of pregnancy complications, miscarriages, preterm births, or adverse effects in the unborn babies following the mRNA COVID-19 vaccination. All right. Pfizer and Moderna both use a new messenger RNA technology. All right. So for tonight, I will call it a feature story. I want to help all of you to understand this. Some of us are real pride. Yes, something work, we don't win. Some of us see other people's life and think that it's more superior than us. So we envy that life that they're living. Everybody wants to go in a big country. Everybody wants to go here the, the, uh, without no real purpose. Some, well, some. I shouldn't say everybody. Without no real When, I, when last all I see that? When last all I see that? <laughs> Agrina Cricks. You know, sometimes when I do any program, I think I eat a Cricks. You know what I mean? So if, yeah, anyway, lady, that talk me. So, <laughs> going back to the story. So, we see other people, life, and we want to be like them. But we don't know what they're going through. We don't have the humility to start from the bottom. Everybody wants to start from the top. Yeah? Nobody wants to go through the ropes. But here's what this man, that I'm about to show you, left the UK, traveled to the Caribbean without any master plan. Right? And starting from the bottom with the hope of getting to the top. The man bring his family to St. Lucia and is now playing guitar and selling juice. You hear me? Juice on the roadside. With the hope of making a dollar so that he can feed his family and get like a profit so that he can grow his business. Not all occupations are undertaken entirely by choice. Numerous personal, cultural, economic and social factors influence participation in occupation. Meet Jason Martin, a UK national based in St. Lucia. Martin has found an occupation of street vending, which some may find undesirable. He could be found at the William Peter Boulevard, offering his services which include martial arts, fitness, yoga, and selling locally made juices to pass us by. We got some golden apple uh, tree in our garden um, and we got some sorrel juice and you know uh, so grapefruit so we're, we're, we're selling that with some with some coconut buns so I thought I'd come to the street and promote my business and I thought I'd just bring a smile to the faces you know just bring the guitar it wasn't even a plan to, to start doing that but I just thought one day that will draw attention and sort of entertain the troops a bit and then people started dropping me a few tips 
so generous. Martin has been on island for the past seven months and resides to the north of the island with his two teenage sons. So what prompted the 52-year-old and father of two boys to St. Lucia? Just a fresh life, you know. Fresh, fresh start, fresh life in a beautiful island like this. My wife comes from Guadeloupe. Um, we've been, I've got married in, got married in East London for for my family, and then we had an, another ceremony in in um, Guadeloupe. So I fell in love with Guadeloupe initially. She's from there, and um, we went back twice. But because I don't speak French, my boys don't speak French, we decided to come to St Lucia, and I did know a couple of or three St Lucians, um, but we never came here before. We never visited St. Lucia, we just said, let's go. So we just did all the, you know, the groundwork, bit of paperwork and stuff like that. And we took a chance, we just came over. Things were not all nice and dandy for the UK national. To be honest, I was a bus driver in London. So I'm not, I, I'm not a rich man. I was just an ordinary, I was a builder, a uh, bus driver, and um, had a, a little house with a mortgage, paid the bank off, got rid of the mortgage, came over, we just bought a little place in the countryside and it was just like I've got to get on with this I've got to build up a clientele I've people have got to get to know me and my wife she does like um, her, her side of it is like beauty and health and on the um, on the label here is is her number and it's her uh, her side of the business and it's like well I've got to I've just got to get out and meet the people so it's like, well, yeah, I'll take my guitar to the street. No one else is doing it. Um, they'll either tell me to shut up or, they'll, or maybe they'll like it. But everyone's, everyone's cool. Everyone's, I mean, it's a great vibe. It's a great vibe out on the street, Castries. He says business on the streets has been lucrative. The entrepreneur says he has been constantly encouraged by many St. Lucians to continue his business. We ask about his two sons, Elijah and Daniel, ages 14 and 15. It's good life experience for them. They do their uh, homework online. They, they work from home at the moment. They're, they're all set up with their computers and, and they do their, um, you know, their schoolwork and their, and their studies online. They just do the homework online from the UK. You know, so it's they're continuing with their studies, but working from home. And then I think this is a, a good opportunity for them to come out and and to meet people. It's good people skills. It's good, you know. I always tell them people don't buy juices or cakes; they buy people. You know, so they're, you know, no one's going to buy off you if you've got a miserable face or whatever. So you know, everyone has a story, but the Martin family says they have found joy on the island in a positive way. Yo, what a story. And uh, there are a lot of lessons to I see Shirin asking. Shirin is asking, listen, Shirin asking what makes him and that story so special? Nah man Shirin. Uh, 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 uh. Now nah, you're playing with me, you're pulling me legs man. You're pulling me legs, right? <laughs> you're kidding me, right? <laughs> There are a lot of lessons to be learned in this man's story. That sometimes we see the grass greener on someone's side. Not realizing that even these someones are seeing what we have. And it's been happening for too long. This man packed up from the UK. And came here to nothing, when I say here, to the Caribbean. Took a chance. Decided to start from the ground up. Eh? Maybe a shell of his former life, even if you say he's driving a boy. I know them boys are going to make our money. <laughs> you understand? And so to understand this here, there are a lot of lessons in this story here. You understand? There are just too many. Stories, uh, lessons, sorry, to be learned in this man's story. He's willing to play the guitar. And eventually, in a few months or so, because he's only been there, what, six, seven months? Huh? You will see the improvement in his business. He was brave enough to do it, not having too much pride to say, I ain't coming out from the UK. 
and come and strum no guitar and sit on the street side and sell juice. Me doing that. Some of us we sit down home. Yes, we complain that we um it don't have work. Yes, it don't have work. You understand? And we let somebody come from somewhere else and start something, and then you go and follow them. Matter. You understand? You have to be willing to do what you have to do so that you can feed your family. See the woman talk about oh, thing, 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 thing. Eh? Man selling juice. What you know about selling uh, about making juice to, to please these island people? Nobody make a better juice than island people. But he's willing to try. God knows. He might put some extra ingredient in it that, that people never thought of. And people go like the juice. Or the fact that he's willing to bring his family to the street side and play the guitar. The juice might so You understand? The juice might taste funny. But people don't mind that. It's a thought that counts. But you must be willing to start. You must be willing to do something for yourself. You understand? Instead of looking to others to do for you and complaining. You understand? Anyway, let me leave that talk. In fact, you have to have the vision to see the story. The, the, you have to have the vision to see the message in the music, as it was say. You have to. You understand? But yeah, boy. This is probably to me. What the biggest story I go tell? You understand? Because a lot of us around the place need that kind of inspiration. You understand? I could tell a hundred stories in a week, but how does that impact you personally? Other than you just knowing what is happening. But then here's a story that can help change or influence your mindset when your back is against the wall. You understand? How are we looking? So all you, we moving again. You understand? No surprise if one of you always see me cutting bush on the side of the road. I'm doing it. If things get hard for me, I'm doing it. You know what I mean? I'm going to sell all kinds of things. Mommy, apple. I'm peeling it for all your things too. I'm doing it. I am making it up. I'm doing it. I'll do it. If that's what it takes to feed my family, to make sure my, my family is not hungry, I'm doing it. You understand? You really lately that talk. How are you looking for time? So, lay, lay that piece. How are you looking again? What we have to tell all you? I feel I wanna, um, I feel I wanna take a little break and come back with the national report. All the fine. Yeah, we can take a little break. Oh, so I know when all of us share the business. All of us share the business. Now, why is that one by? Share the thing, man. Share the business. Don't come and play all the thing and thing and share the thing. You know what I mean? Hold on, let me take a little break now. And I'm coming back with the national report. Give some love with dread. Bringing love for you to scare. Communion showing that we care. With gifts of love with dread. We're, we're bringing you gifts of love with chair at the communal. This Christmas, we are your Santa. It's all about sharing the warmth of this season with those you love. Getting on this special loan, taking advantage of great interest rates with no principal payments until January 2022. Share the gift of love. Make it a merrier Christmas with the communal. Exciting prizes for members throughout the promotion. For we are your Santa this Christmas. Offer ends January 31st, 2022. Lending terms and conditions apply. Communion show with that we care With gifts of love with trade Diamond Intercontinental Jewelry Store now has amazing deals, special discounted prices on wedding sets, watches and selected jewelry. We sell top brand jewelry and watches like Citizen, Guess and Klein and G-Shock all at the best prices in Grenada. We also buy scrap gold and offer the best deals and customer service on the island. Opening hours Mondays to Saturdays 9.30am to 5pm. Diamond Intercontinental
Continental Jewelry Store located at the Esplanade Mall, St. George's, Grenada. Visit our brand new remodeled store or call us on telephone number 414-3114-232-1234 or WhatsApp 533-1581. Sale is on for a limited time only. Only. Running low on groceries? Why not visit realvalueiga.com and experience our new online shopping platform? Place your order, then go out and enjoy your day to spend more time with friends and family. Free delivery available within select locations or in-store pickup available. Sounds simple, right? It is. Stress less? Live more with Real Value IGA Online Store, where good food begins. delicious and packed with vitamins that could only be one thing it's a rica almond beverage great on its own or a lovely addition to smoothies so call superb distributors on 435-2948 or visit us at tempe st george's today remember rica is life and life is rica the housing authority offers products that people can choose from, products that people can access. And I think anyone looking to build, just call the Housing Authority of Grenada. The service was um, superb. Every step of the way, they collaborated with the owner. They collaborated with the builder. The builder himself was really good. For what I've seen them do, I have to say that from buildings they have done in the past, so where they are now, they have come up to speed with modern trends, modern designs, and I think I will advise anybody to choose the Housing Authority of Grenada. Well, that was easy. Getting what you want now. At Court, you can find appliances, electronics, and furniture that you need at the unbeatable prices. Save up to 20% off the essentials. Get it now with Ready Finance and get two months free. Only at Court. Bringing value home. Special can supply. Promotion runs till January 31st, 2022. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy and a little sassy it's the drink for me cheers sometimes you've got to show them who's boss alpha male nah alpha females are more amazing cheers to secure in the bag we make time for ourselves for work friends and we certainly make time for passion we're simply amazing amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you We enjoy the luxury of a quality water supply. But it can come to this. Have adequate storage. Welcome to Yogo. Most of you know us for our food delivery service and our food pass for free delivery from restaurants. But did you know you can also use us for grocery deliveries too? We've just added another 5,000 plus new items to Yogo Supermarket. And stay updated as we add more products and vendors. Yogo Services is our convenient skip the line offering. Let us pay your electric, water, and other utility bills for you. With us, you will be able to buy tickets, pay your rent, schedule bookings, and other services. Need a ride to get somewhere? Give Yogo Lift a try. Select your pickup location and destination location and wait for our driver to collect you. Never have to worry about how you're going to get to a place again. Please see website or app for our service locations. And sign up now.
Ministry of Health to discontinue routine COVID-19 testing at MBIA. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, January 18, 2022, I am Chrisanne Mitchell. The Ministry of Health says routine COVID-19 testing will be discontinued for arriving passengers at the Maurice Bishop International Airport, effective tomorrow, Wednesday, January 19. While this change is being made, the ministry says a port health officer may still require a traveler to be subject to a COVID-19 test if deemed necessary based on the entry health screen. In addition, passengers arriving without the required entry test or with an incorrect test will be subject to a COVID-19 test at his or her expense prior to being processed by legal authorities. Testing of unvaccinated travelers in quarantine on day five after arrival will continue as normal and all other entry requirements will remain in force. The Ministry of Health says testing resources will now be used in the communities where needed. This has become even more important since cases among arriving travellers have been extremely low, less than 1% of the total tests done, evidencing the fact that the 72-hour pre-travel PCR testing requirement remains effective at limiting the entry of the disease. The ministry employed many strategies in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of these was testing at ports of entry, which was recently upscaled in response to the identification of the new variant, Omicron, which was discovered in November 2021. The aim of testing on arrival was to quickly detect cases, which could potentially be the new variant, in an effort to delay their introduction into Grenada. However, despite the efforts, Grenada now has community spread of Omicron, similar to the Delta variant. Grenada paid final respects to the 5th Governor General, Sir Kyle Glean, on Wednesday as he was laid to rest in his hometown of St. John. Sir Kali passed away on December 21st at the age of 89 after serving as Governor General for five years from 2008 to 2013. The former Governor General was given a state funeral in keeping with government's policy on state and official funerals. Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin, Government ministers and officials of government and the Royal Grenada Police Force all convened at the St. Peter's Catholic Church in Guave St. John to bid farewell to Sir Carly. Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade said she is honored to have succeeded such a humble, hardworking public servant. She spoke of how Sir Carly's advice to her has influenced her life. I recall the sound advice he gave me when I served as Chairman of the Public Service Commission during the period 2008 to 2010 and before I assumed office as Governor General in 2013. On the latter occasion, he stressed that when making certain decisions, I should always act, and I quote, out of an abundance of caution and for the avoidance of doubt, end of quote, before taking or not taking a particular action. These words of advice he disclosed to me were given to him by Dr. Francis Alexis QC and have served me very well over the past eight years. His final act of long and distinguished service to our beloved country was his exemplary service as the fifth Governor General of Grenada, a role he performed with dignity and honor and with a gentle touch which won him the admiration of many Grenadians. Dr. Mitchell reminisced on Sir Carly, the politician, and how he remained humble throughout the journey, a quality he says many politicians should emulate. I had the opportunity to see him as a political figure 
He seemed to be one of the few persons in the country who went into that era of responsibility and not gained too much enemies at any given time, either temporarily or permanently. This to me, sisters and brothers, may be a good way of remembering Sir Carlisle for those of us in the political hustings to take a page from his book. As I reflect, therefore, on the life of Sir Carlisle today, I recall, therefore, an exceptional person, a genuine and decent human being whose most endearing trait was probably the level of humility he displayed throughout his entire life. Sir Carlisle's family and the Sisters of Sorrowful Mother hosted an evening of prayer and thanksgiving on Monday evening. Many shared memories of a great man, son of the soil, who has left an indelible mark on their lives and the lives of many Grenadians. Sir Carlisle became a mentor to me, a man of deep respect and deep regard. He was humble and yet I can say that Sir Kalai stood head and shoulders above many of those who hold leadership positions in our country. Before you lie the remains of a man who had very poor and humble beginnings, just like you. Yet he rose from the depths and doldrums of poverty to the highest utterance of power in our country to become the Governor General of Grenada. Think about it. Think about it very seriously and very deliberately. In his public life as statesman and minister of government, Sir Carline was a person of integrity, nobility, decency, and gentleness. May the tributes and Eucharist which we celebrate as we thank him for his self-giving and thank God for his witness of faith and love inspire young people to follow in the Carlisle footsteps. The road will be different, but the destination remains the same the fullness of life for all in God's Grenada. He had a quiet disposition, but possessed and exhibited a wealth of knowledge and provided helpful insights. He communicated eloquently and with clarity. As an educator, he was conversant with multiple disciplines, and at his feet, one was both enlightened and encouraged to pursue self-learning. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. That's it. Tongue up. All right, that big more I say, moving out. They're moving out. I took my best shot to keep bringing that moving. Drive out, they move. A message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. The official opening of the Grenada Consulate in Dubai over the weekend makes Grenada the first CARICOM country to have a consulate in the United Arab Emirates. To mark the occasion, a ceremony was attended by Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Business Honorable Oliver Joseph, Consul General Roseanne Benjamin, and other UAE diplomats. The consulate, which forms part of the country's overseas mission, was open in 2019. However, with the absence of the foreign minister to witness the opening, the official ribbon-cutting ceremony was postponed. Minister Joseph said it is an honor to be part of the historic opening of the consulate. He commended the Consul General for her hard work in promoting Grenada and maintaining good relations with the United Arab Emirates. I want to commend our Consul General Rosa Benjamin for the work she has been doing here. We are very pleased that we have somebody in the caliber of Rosa to represent Grenada 
in Dubai. I'm sure it must be a great sacrifice for her to be live with them and be here. But she has informed me that with the cooperation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all the government officials, it has made her job quite easy. And therefore, we can have the opening today of this council. This is a really historical moment for us in Grenada, opening the first consulate of CARICOM in Dubai. And um, we are pleased to be part of this historic occasion. So as we move forward, I invite you to visit Grenada so they can see our beautiful island and help us promote all the investment opportunities there are in Grenada because we have a lot of investment opportunities in various areas and I'm sure Roseanne been promoting it so that we can, together our two countries can deepen and strengthen their relations as we move forward. Consul General Her Excellency Rose Ann Benjamin expressed appreciation for the support to the government and people of Grenada from the UAE government. She anticipates continued support in the future as both countries deepen relations. Since the consulate's presence here in the United Arab Emirates, Grenada has received an enormous support by the government and people of the United Arab Emirates, a support that has been ongoing for decades. It is my hope with this official opening today, more and more collaborations can be made as we work together to make this world a better place. Finally, in the news, the head of the Human and Social Division at the OECS Commission is calling on regional governments to avoid being distracted by the misinformation and division surrounding the subject of vaccination. Dr. Carleen Radix was at the time addressing a virtual ceremony held to reveal the findings of a regional survey conducted by the Caribbean Development Research Services on vaccine hesitancy in six islands, including Grenada. Dr. Radix emphasized that governments must focus on doing everything in their power to educate and protect the vulnerable of society. She also highlighted the key role of the media in disseminating factual information to positively propel the vaccination campaigns in each country. I want to make a call for all our countries, our region, to not allow the divisions that have complicated the focus on dealing with COVID-19 to distract us from the need to consistently do everything that we need to and are willing to, to protect the most vulnerable among us while keeping our economies running. I make an appeal here to the media represented, represented as you also have an extremely important role, which I know you take seriously and which is so important currently to expose persons um, in, a, in a, a palatable way to the medical and scientific information and general experiences around vaccine side effects and concerns. I also know the need to continue to educate the public on the importance of and efficacy of our general public health vaccines and even the history of our Caribbean region, which has led the world to the elimination of vaccine-preventable diseases. The Ministry of Health and Social Security recorded 470 new positive cases on Monday after conducting 2,157 tests at various locations island-wide. This now brings the total number of active cases to 3,421. The latest data points to 256 new recoveries and seven people are currently hospitalized. The ministry's aggressive contact tracing and testing campaigns continues throughout the week and on the weekends at clinics, medical facilities and pop-up locations across the country. 36,389 Grenadians are fully vaccinated. 5,792 partially vaccinated and 4,293 booster doses have been administered to date. That story has brought us to the end of the National Report for today, Tuesday, January 18, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Chris Ann Mitchell saying thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Chrisanne, and I, I, um, I see that we've uh, received the
COVID-19 dashboard for today and we can tell you that Grenada recorded 239 new cases of COVID-19 today. And that's out of 1,686 tests that were conducted. Fortunately, there are no deaths. However, there are six hospitalizations. The test positivity is 14.2%. There are also new recoveries, that's uh, 314 uh, new recoveries, all right? So that's it right there. Ah, wow, 239 new COVID-19 cases recorded today alone. All right, and uh, what we have next for you is... Uh, I look at the the, um, the public forecast. We're talking about the weather uh, for tonight. We are open lotto. I'll give you the weather open lotto. We yeah no okay. So for the weather for tonight, as submitted by the Met Office, we can expect the weather to be mostly close, mostly cloudy and windy, with light to moderate showers improving by morning. The minimum temperature for tonight: 24 degrees Celsius. Winds. East northeasterly to easterly at 14 to 24 miles per hour. Seas moderate with waves 5 to 7 feet in open waters. High surf advisory is in effect for the west coast. Now we can expect there to be um, low tides at 11 p.m. tonight. That's in an hour from now. High tides is going to be in cloudiness after midnight with brief isolated showers. The max temperature 30.5 degrees Celsius. The minimum 24. Winds east northeasterly to easterly at 15 to 25 miles per hour gusting higher at times seas moderate with waves four to seven feet in open waters high surf advisory again to be in effect for the west coast for tomorrow before we wrap let's say hello to the folks who are currently on youtube we see that we have my mom uh, signing in as the first person there then we have velma then we have uh petal and uh, everyone else who is currently on YouTube, we say hello to you. For those of you who are currently on Facebook, all right, uh, we want to say hello to Ventress, Shireen, <laughs> Zapli Lato, Zaka, Adana, Cynthia, um, and all the usual suspects, we want to say hello to you. Okay, um, people like Janice and uh, Kirin and Gemma, Meryl. Oh, Meryl, my sister, she's watching on the big screen. So, yeah, I go have something for the big screen. I will probably have a, uh, you know, a little thing. I have to take out a picture. We go have a nice little thing for people on big screen. So, you're going to take a picture of your big screen. And we're going to choose a winner randomly. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, you know I mean? Anyway, yes. Vicky, who else is with us? Um, Angel and Dillian. And uh, who else? Uh, Mishi and Erlis. And, and I mean, like everybody, 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 hello to you, all right? God bless you and the family. And we're going to touch base tomorrow, God's willing, again. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take a fresh and then um, thing, Ansha and everybody else. You're going to take a fresh and take a rest. And I mean, so take care. There you go. In five, four, three, two, one, we all say, ja, no, take care.